Tales Sews, my name's Sarah, thanks for joining me today. Um, it is my second unboxing video for uh, the Little Miss So-and-So All Set to Sew Luxury Box. Now, I will say in advance, I do not get paid to do these, I do not get gifted the boxes. Um, I just had thought for a while that I might like to try a subscription box, um, but I was worried about the lack of control. Uh, and then I came across the Little Miss So-and-So boxes and I really enjoyed watching people's unboxing videos because um, you have a choice of two patterns, basically a woven and a knit pattern, um, and then you can pick from a selection of fabrics. So I find it quite interesting to see, A, which pattern people have chosen, but also which fabric. Because, I mean, sometimes I'll think like, oh, this is the really obvious choice. And then you'll see the choices that other people make and they look great. So I really enjoy um, watching that and seeing what other people come up with. So I have my March package here to open um, and behind me you will see my finished garment from February. So I'll talk about this first. This is the So Liberated Hinterland Dress. Um, it's I had actually not heard of it but when I looked the hashtag on uh, Instagram was really big so it's obviously a very popular pattern. Um, now I had some I don't know if concern is the right word, but I was a bit worried about the fit. So it's woven uh, pattern and it has this button up bodice. As you can see, you have an option to have the button placket going all the way to the bottom. But I chose because I've done a few sort of shirt dresses and stuff recently. I thought I've done enough button plackets. So um, mine has just a full gathered skirt and then a button placket here. And that's actual button, like a working button placket. Um, you've got this nice round sort of scoop neck and then there are several sleeve options. I went for three quarter length, which is the longest length of sleeves. Um, and then I think there's a, a cap sleeve and then like a sleeveless option. Um, yeah, so my main issue, I've made a bodice a bit like this before. Um, which pattern was it? I think it was maybe the Tudor blouse by Stitch Witch. Um, and... I found the fitting really difficult. So I ended up with a lot of um, excess in the neckline. Um, and yeah, I just find with, with this style, you really want the fit to be good. Um, and it's not necessarily really straightforward. Now I'm busty, but I've got quite a small frame in my shoulders. So I often find that to fit the bust, I have to size up, but then I end up with loads of gaping around the neckline and the shoulders. And that is much more complex adjustment to make. Um, now, interestingly, with this, I did not have that problem at all, which I wasn't expecting. So I didn't make a twirl. I'm going to be honest with you. I really barely ever. I think I've twirled things like twice ever. Um, once was when I was doing the cashmere at Upton in lace because the lace fabric was so expensive that I wanted to make sure the fit was good. Um, I think I maybe twirled like another top sometime, but I gen generally don't twirl. Um, what I have become better at is understanding um, the cup sizes that patterns are drafted for and also looking at the finished garment measurements and working out from the style of the pattern whether I can afford to size down or if I need to size up or whatever. Um, now in this instance I actually sized down because there's a little bit of ease in the bust. Now I'm going to try and get some pictures of this on later today and if I'm successful I will put them here so you can see them. Um, it ends up being quite fitted at the bust for me but I like that shape um, and I don't feel like it's straining too much or anything. Um, and then you've got this nice waist tie which brings it in. So I was really surprised and thrilled at how well this actually fit. I've made no adjustments at all. Also, the three quarter length sleeves, I thought were quite a good length on me. Um, again, it's a common adjustment for me to have to um, shorten sleeves. I always find they're too long, um, but I didn't shorten these and they, they've worked out just fine. So a little bit more information about the pattern. So you've got this um, scoop neck, which is supposed to have a facing. Now in the instructions, there was this really complicated description of how to attach the facing. Um, and I sort of don't know if that's because it is complicated uh, or if they've just worded it in a way that makes it seem more complicated. I basically ended up just putting it, applying it like a, a bound neckline instead. Um, so I started off following their steps and then I got to a point and I was like, I just have no idea what they're talking about. So I just ended up binding it. 
Otherwise, I'd say the instructions are pretty clear. They've got some clear diagrams and stuff. It was just that moment. Now, I don't think what I did with the neck has caused any issues. Like, the fit's good. The finish is neat. Um, yeah, so maybe you might be able to give some sort of clarity on what they're trying to explain. But I've ended up with a bound neckline. Um, the three-quarter length sleeves have a little cuff, um, which is just really straightforward. But I think it's quite a nice finish as well. Um, the skirt is just gathered. Uh, you've got a double button placket, so you you attach on both sides of the front bodice. You attach a placket, and then on the back, if I can turn it around, um, I have done. I've not tied it very well, have I? I've done a, a waist tie. That's optional. Um, you add it at a very early stage, um, but I think it's quite nice to just cinch it in. And other than that, it's very straightforward on the back. It's just a straight bodice, no darts or anything in the back. Um, and your gathered skirt. So as I said, you have the option when you cut it out, if you wanted to have the um, button placket going all the way down, you just have the skirt, the front skirt is cut in two pieces rather than one, and then you add your placket as per the bodice. Um, but yeah, generally, oh, and it has pockets. That's the other thing I forgot to say, it has pockets. Um, yeah, so that's it with the pattern. I'm honestly really pleased with the, the drafting. I just didn't think, um, I was just sure I was going to have problems in the neckline because I always do and it sits pretty much perfectly flat and that's with zero adjustment so um I'm really pleased with that I know I've I read a few things I think which also made me nervous about other people having issues with the fitting of the bodice um yeah so maybe I was just lucky but anyway I'm really pleased with that and I'm definitely going to be making this again this is one of the reasons I sort of love the um a subscription box idea is because so far I've had two patterns which I've never done before and hadn't really shown any interest in buying um and I've loved both of them and will definitely make both again so that I suppose is the benefit of, of doing a subscription box like this um the fabric I ch I've chosen is uh I think it's a Lady McElroy floral print um yeah I just thought it was pretty I like the colours very like spring time and again I think I could get away with wearing this for work um the buttons were the ones that came in the box so they select those for you and I was pleased with them you could always swap them out but I thought like white buttons work nicely um yeah and it's it's a lawn that's what I should have said it's a uh, cotton lawn um it's a little bit you know, I don't know if you can see that it's a it's a little bit see-through actually when the light's behind it but I think when you have it on I don't think anyone would notice um I did have one little drama which is that when I was trimming the uh seam at the waist I accidentally cut a hole in the back of my bodice um down here which again I mean I've sewed it up actually very badly uh but um I might go over it and do a neater job but um I think because the the print is so busy it it isn't so noticeable fortunately um yeah it was a stupid mistake so I just put some interfacing over and just stitched it up quickly but I'll probably yeah do a, a, a better job of that anyway so so far I've had two boxes, made two garments, and I've been really pleased with both um, makes. So that's great. Uh, so the next thing is to unbox my March box. Now, this was the first time where I was looking at the pattern choices. So as I said, you get a knit and a woven pattern choice. And so far, I've chosen both the woven patterns, two dress patterns. Um, and I was a little bit unsure. So one of them was the pearl cardigan by Tilly and the Buttons, which I already have. Um, and the other one was, I cannot remember the pattern company, but it was a, another woven dress. Um, and the reason I was unsure was because I was looking at this other dress and I liked it on, like the initial reaction was I liked the idea. It had a sort of wrap around waist. Um, it was like made in a linen. But then they had, the, I could only find pictures of one person in extended sizing wearing it um and basically the version so it didn't have sleeves in the original version you can there is a sleeved version but it changes the cut so the un the sleeveless version had like a bit more shaping at the top whereas the version with sleeves was just much more boxy and I just couldn't see enough examples of it on like sort of plus size people to make me sure that I was going to like it. And I just sort of thought, I've got a lot of woven dress patterns. Um, so instead, what I've decided to do, and I, I then decided to look at the fabric, 
But when I went back, there was one fabric that I sort of liked for the woven pattern. And then when I went back to look again, that fabric was gone. And I sort of thought I preferred one of the knit fabrics. So I've ended up getting Pearl again um, with a view that because I already have it, I might gift it to somebody else. Um, I might do a bit of a giveaway when I reach a certain number of subscribers. I might do a little bundle of things and that pattern might be in there. Because obviously the really good thing about these Tilling the Button patterns is the full size range are in one um, paper pattern. So you could give it to any anybody, um, which is great, uh, rather than limiting it to you have to be in this size range or this size range. Um, so yeah, so let me show you what I've got anyway. Um, and you can let me know what you think. Ooh. This is such a pretty parcel. Okay, so first up, this is such... A good haberdashery gift for me um this is such a good haberdashery gift okay it is a hemline oh i'm pulling off there a bit of plastic it's a hemline spool box so if you see that it says hemline gold on the bottom and then inside it has space for all of your spools now this is great for me because i just have um i don't mean spools i mean bobbins i ha just have bobbins everywhere um, I, I do keep them in a specific box, but also I tend to get mixed up between my Mariflex and my normal ones. Um, whereas I'm thinking here I can have some sort of system. Maybe all of my normal ones go in here and then my Mariflex ones stay in the little pot. Maybe that's the way forward. That's a really useful gift. Wow. They are really helpful, these little gifts that they give each each um, month. I found them always to be like very thoughtful, very thoughtful things. So... That is a great gift and will help with organising stuff. Um, okay, then we have the pattern. So I've already told you what the pattern is. So it's the Tilly and the Button Pearl. So if you don't know anything about this, I've actually made this twice before. One for me and one for my mum. Um, so I made one in like a textured knit fabric, uh, just plain navy. And uh, then for my mum for Christmas, I made her a um, stretch velvet green one which generally was quite nice the finishing on the inside was not great because um the stretch velvet just went a bit crazy it went a bit insane but anyway um so i've made this pattern twice so what i'm probably going to do is use the pattern i've already got cut to make this up and then as i said i'm going to keep hold of this um to give away at some point so if you don't know about the pearl it's basically a wrap cardigan um i'll hold it up here so you can see some of the drawings on the back so you can have long straight sleeves short straight sleeves or these little balloon sleeves um and it's got a nice sort of crossover neckline with a, a tie um it's cropped length um comes in sizes 6 to 34 um yeah and i mean that's that's more or less what there is to to talk about with this one um i think so so far as i said i've made it as like an overgarment more or less uh, this fabric is going to make it more of like a top um as opposed to like a cardigan if that makes sense so let's pop that down right so i'll show you the other little bits i've got so here's the thread which gives you a bit of a clue for the fabric i have chosen um yep it is in sh oh i throw it on the floor we don't know what shade it's in blue i threw it over there um i've also got so the um neckline of the pearl is bound and i have a uh, Wait, no, that's total light. It's not bound. I'm remembering what this is now. Um, you have to have interfacing, but it's got to be knit interfacing. So you still want to have a bit of movement, which is, I thought this was like a glittery binding, but I'm just realising it's the glue on the, <laughs> it's the glue on the stretch interfacing. So I have a load of this knit interfacing, which is already cut to the size it needs to be. How great is that? So I don't have to be cutting out strips of that fab. And then we get to the fabric. So this is the fabric that I have chosen. So it is um, a Dashwood Studios cotton jersey. Um, it is in this lovely sort of, it's, uh, is it a navy? Yeah, I suppose it is. It's a navy, but it's like quite on the light, lighter end of a navy. Uh, and it's got these little white flowers um, with some black sort of graphic designs and some pink and red spots. So I just, out of all the fabrics they had available, as I said, there was a red linen that I quite liked the look of for the woven dress, but then it was gone. And this was the only other thing that I really um, 
that jumped out on me this month. So I'm obviously feeling the florals at the moment, aren't I? It's just like florals everywhere. So this is going to be a pearl wrap top for next month. Um, now I'm going to revisit my previous pearl that I made myself um, and just have a look at the fit and decide if I want to do anything to it because I don't wear it that often. I don't really know why because I made it because it was very, um, I thought it would go over a lot of work wear things. Um, but I haven't worn it loads and I'm wondering maybe if there was a fit thing. So I'm going to, I'm one of those people with wrap tops. Everyone always says, oh, they're easier to fit because obviously you just tie them tighter or whatever. But I have a lot of problems with necklines on wrap items. Again, it's normally like about having excess in the neckline and not being, you know, you tie it as tight as you can and they're still gaping. Um, so before I sew this up for next month, I'm going to have a look at the one I've already made and see if I think there are any fit adjustments that need to happen before I cut into this. There is absolutely loads of fabric here. So I suspect that I will, um, I mean, I'll double check. I don't know exactly how much there is, but normally, I mean, it looks like a hunk of fabric there. So I think I'll probably have plenty left to make something else, um, which is great because this is super cute. I might go for a cashmere. Um, oh, what's that square neck top? I think it's the Carlisle tee that was on the Cashmere um, Club, which is like a square neck t-shirt, which is kind of cute. Or I could just make just a general tee or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just yabbering on now. Um, thank you so much for watching. I do really recommend these boxes. And as I've said, I'm not paid to say that. I've just really enjoyed. I enjoy getting it each month. I enjoy getting the email where you get to pick your options each month. So that'll be where are we that'll be next next week i guess or week after that um so and then i really enjoy sewing them up i've so far i've loved both of the things i've made uh, i think this is going to be super cute as well um now as i said i get the so luxurious box which is 65 pounds a month um and you get um designer fabric so that could be lady McElroy, um dashwood studios atelier brunette um yeah, anything like that. They also have, um, I can't remember the exact name, is it So Classic or something like that? They've got one that's about 40, 45 pounds, where it's also a really nice selection of fabrics, but they're not designer fabrics. Um, and then I think they also have like a budget box. And then they have like a quilting box and they have, they have all sorts of boxes. Um, I just like the element of choice. I feel like it focuses my mind. Um, I always get to a point each month where I think, I don't know what to sew next. And then at the moment, this is always, this project has sort of, gotten me sewing again um it focuses your mind but it gives you freedom to make sure that you are not ending up with a stash full of fabric that you don't use um my plan is to continue just as long as i can afford to do it i will be um yeah trying to sew them up within the month of getting them so that they're not sitting in my stash um and testing myself a bit yeah anyway thanks so much for tuning in um have a great week and i'll see you soon bye